Hey everybody, today I'm working on a Dynasty hot tub. Josh gave me a call, he lives out in Goodyear, Arizona and said he has a leak. Wasn't sure if it was coming from the pump or where it was coming from, but uh, let me show you what's going on. If you clearly look right here, we could have a couple different things going on. We could have a, either this could be loose, the rubber O-ring on the inside could be faulty, also the same thing on this side. So what we're gonna do is this is the heater tube. We're gonna pull that out and possibly replace the whole thing and get rid of all this leaking underneath. This is a common problem after I talk to the folks at uh, Geico that happens after five to seven years with a spa that has gecko products in it. With the calcium buildup here in Arizona, after a while the spas just start to leak. Easy fix, probably take about 20 minutes to an hour to fix depending on how easy things come off. So stick around and I'll show you how it's done. As always, before you work on or touch any hot tub, shut off the breaker. Okay, first things first, you gotta take off these four screws. This panel comes off. Okay, to remove this heater, you have to take off this screw. You got one over here, and you got a screw right here. This is your heating elements. So you got two right here. You got your ground up here. You got a sensor right here. And then you got another sensor right here. You got a ground right here. Pretty simple to do, just takes a little bit of time. If you're not sure what you're doing, take a picture of it before you take it apart. Take the ground wire off. straighten the ground wire out and then this piece comes off. If you don't straighten out this ground wire right here, you cannot get this piece off because the ground wire will hold it in place. Next, I always start with these. I go from left to right. So I take off the connections like this. Don't lose the screws. I can't tell you how many times I've been teaching somebody to do this and one of my guys or a customer will call and say I lost the screw. So it's not hard to do. So. Now when you're doing this, the one on the left goes on the bottom. The one in the middle is on the right and then this one goes on the top. I don't really know if it does make a difference which order these two go into. These are your two hot lugs for the heater, but I know this one has to go at the top. So I always try to do things left to right. It just works better. Okay, now when you go to these clips, look at these clips really good. This one has the wires. It goes red, white, green, black. Now sometimes they can be flipped and sometimes they can't. Just make sure. On this one down here, it goes green, red, black. So just make a note of that, you know, a mental note. Take a picture with your cell phone or write it on a piece of paper just so you don't forget. And then just real gently grab, don't grab onto the wires, grab onto the, the piece and then pull it out of there. Same thing down here, grab on, pull it out of there. Now that you've got all this disconnected, next thing we'll do is these. These are your couplings on each side. Usually I just take a screwdriver and I unscrew it right here and on the bottom and then it just splits apart and the, the, the heating element will come out. Now this one's on the other side. I might have to do it. If you take a real close look right there, see all the calcium build up right there? That's what I believe is causing the problem and stuff. You just got way too much calcium right there. Well, I now have the heater out and you can see one of the reasons why it was leaking. That is all that is left of the O-ring that was on this side. This one had a little bit remnants of an O-ring and on the inside of the heater tube, it was just all calcium and corroded up. So I do believe I found our problem. So we'll go ahead and grab the new heater and put that in. Okay, this is our new heater and then this is our old heater. The first thing I always recommend doing is checking your, your connections. So we do have two hot, we have our two hot connections here. We have the same two up here. We got our ground right here. And then we have this for one of the, uh, this is probably one of the sensors. I'm not sure which one this one is. But just make sure they're in the same direction to where you got red. It might be yellow, white, green, black. And then I got up here, I got a red, white, green, black, which is the same. And then I got, if I call it this way, green, red, black. And if I go up here, it's 
green, red, black. So everything is the same on the two heater heaters and stuff. And what's really cool about a gecko is they, when you buy a new heater and a heater tube, they give you everything. They give you the brand new gaskets. They also, if you have to replumb it, they give you this piece, which actually would go on the end, which is this piece right here. So if you're gonna uh, replumb it, it comes with this piece, comes with a new gasket, brand new heater, comes with all the wires to connect it, the ground. It's a complete unit, which I really think Gecko has done a great job at that. Uh, at times, I'm not a huge fan of Gecko products, but I do think over the last couple of years, um, they've really come a long way and I need to reevaluate um, their product and look, give it a give it another once over. But so far, what I'm seeing right here, this is about a 2014, 2015 pack. So in the last uh, probably six or seven years, they've really come a long way with a really, really quality product. Kudos to Gecko. I'm gonna have to give the uh, company a call and tell them I really do endorse their product right now. And I'm not being paid to say that. Um, I like when I see a quality product that's easy to work on, that a homeowner themselves, when they're working on it, can make a video, take pictures, watch one of my videos, and figure out how to do it for themselves if they choose to do it. I do believe that a homeowner could change this with a little bit of uh, practice and a little bit of time, patience. I think they could make it happen. And with that, we're going to put this thing back together. I bet I will. We're finished dumping water, right? Oh yeah, we ain't dumping any water. I mean, uh, with leaks and stuff. When you turn it on, you know, make sure no leaks. Right? Oh yeah. So I'm gonna try and get this water out of here. Well, that went together pretty easy. Let me know when you're recording, and I'll. Uh, I'm right now. Okay, everybody. Now, once you got that in place, you do have to turn. You got to turn this so that it is straight up and down. You want to get it as close as you can to straight up and down. And then when you're going to put everything back together, you're just going to go backwards. Okay, I've got this sensor in place which is green, red, black, just like the last one. Got this sensor up here in place, which is red, white, green, black. So all those are in place. So now I'm gonna come up here. This one will go to the top, the middle, and then the bottom. Pretty simple. Do not have gorilla hands when you're doing this. There's no reason to. It's not like it's gonna vibrate out and come apart. Nobody's going to be tugging on it. Just make sure it's snug. I can't tell you how many times I've worked on something that somebody had gorilla hands and I had to turn and just about break the thing off. Even though I was going to throw the part away, I sometimes like to take the used part back to my shop and I'll dissect the part to find out why it broke. Just like you've seen on a couple of my previous videos where as I'm taking something apart, I can find out, aha, wow, this came unsoldered or it came loose or it wasn't connected properly. The reason why I'm doing that is because sometimes I'll contact the manufacturer to tell the manufacturer what has been going on with their product, especially if I see it two or three times in a row. So anyways, we've got this done. That's there. Now we're going to open up these two gate valves and we're going to see if it leaks right here. We'll open up this one too. This is the time you can have gorilla hands. You can tighten these things down. I don't really recommend using channel locks on these because you will break them. Uh, sometimes you just have to. But you can have gorilla hands on that. When you open up these gate valves, make sure that you put these clips back in place. That keeps these from going back down. The next thing we'll do is we'll put in this. You have to put this in first before you can hook up your ground wire. This has to go in first, then your ground wire hooks up.
Put your ground in. Don't make your ground stick out too high, otherwise you can't get your door back on. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and see how it works. What do you think, everybody? Is it gonna work? We have no leak. Yay. I think we have contact. The only thing I've got left to do is to put the door back on, which I will do right after I let this thing run for a minute or so. Now on the back, on the back of all packs, you always have a schematic. It shows you how to wire it. You got your green down here for ground. You got your black, which is the first lead. That's your first hot wire. You got your neutral, and you got your second hot wire. This is a nice setup that they show you exactly how this whole thing is wired. Like I said, I'm gonna have to give Gecko a call and give them some kudos for this because I'm very, very, very impressed with what I see. Over here, it shows your heater. Heating element. Shows the ground on the top, so you know where the heating element goes. Pretty simple. You got your other one sensor here. You got your other sensor right here. Very, very, very detailed schematics. I'm very impressed. Well, I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. Um, my goal in doing these videos is to show homeowners it's really not that hard to fix a hot tub. Some hot tubs have little corks about them, which I'll point out as I'm. You know, either changing a heater or changing a sensor or a diverter valve. I always point those out. You know, the differences between, you know, a jacuzzi, like this one's a Dynasty Spa, a Tough Spa, or a Sundance. They're all good quality hot tubs. They just all have, you know, different quirks about them that you need to know. Uh, this was not a hard fix. I think any homeowner that has a little bit of mechanical aptitude would be able to do this. Um, you know, it didn't take many parts, I think, or tools. I think the only thing I needed was a uh, Phillips screwdriver to do this job and then you know, a cord lift to do the uh, skirting around it. Anyways, uh, if you enjoy these videos, could you please hit the subscribe button on the right side and hit the bell and every time I post a video, it'll send you an email or a text. And remember, it's just a hot tub in the backyard full of water and blows bubbles. Don't go crazy. And with that, I'll see you guys on the next spa repair. Have a great day, everybody.